guys, and welcome back to another episode of Federico Talks Watches. Uh, let me just check my collar real quick because I didn't notice. Oh, there we go. Anyway, Federico Talks Watches. Today we're going to talk about uh, where is the best place I've ever bought a watch? And is my ego getting the best of me? Somebody actually asked that. We're going to answer it. My favorite question. All that and more in today's episode. Now, of course, before we get started, customary wristwatch check. Today I'm wearing the Breguet Marine Big Date. Absolutely love the sucker. Also, guys, don't forget to check out DelrayWatch.com. Genuinely, some very cool watches just came in. An Omega Speedmaster Mark 40, colorful edition. The one, um, the Hadinky remade, even though the vintage one is much better. A Longines Heritage for Hadinki, the one that was just released. If you missed that, we do have one for sale at Delray Watch. And a Rolex 50th Anniversary Submariner Kermit Complete. And, best of all, cheapest complete set in the world. And it is in very nice condition. All that and more at DelrayWatch.com. The only place a watch geek should ever buy a pre-owned watch. Now, guys, these are the questions you asked on my Instagram at Federico Talks Watches. Please don't DM me. I will not answer. But when you see the Q&A picture, you can ask your question. I'm going to read them in no particular order. And if you see me looking down, I'm not trying to be rude. Just reading out the questions. The first one is from I'm Gonzalez. Hey, Fed, big fan. Thank you, brother. I don't think I've ever heard your opinion, Richard Meal. Why don't you sell them? Well, I don't sell them for two reasons. On a business level, they're just very, very expensive to stock, and it's not really my clientele. On a personal level, I don't sell them because I think they're trash. Plastic, oversized watches that are double-fisted by wrappers to show how rich they are. If you're wearing a Richard Meal, you're also probably wearing some Gucci slides, a Balmain t-shirt, and probably post your checks on Instagram. Um, yeah, not really my thing, personally. Um, yeah, really, just, you know, when you can get a Maurice Lacroix with the same movement for like, I don't know, 85 times less than a Richard Meal, I mean, I, it, it, not for me. This is just my opinion. You guys like it, go, go right ahead. Next, Zarco.RealEstate. Would you agree that Zenith is one of the best value brands out there in terms of quality, design, fit, and movements? Yes, Zenith really is. But the reason they can afford uh, such great movements and quality and at not very high prices, they don't really innovate much. Okay, yes, the past couple of years they've innovated. But the El Primero has been the El Primero since the 60s. I mean, there's no... R&D cost anymore so of course they can you know make a nice profit and still offer a great movement they've been selling the same thing for 50 years still love Zenith Jake Morris hey fed with secondary market longer prices increasing like they do do you think it's due to market manipulation of certain dealers or is it just that the customers have realized how undervalued they are um, there is market manipulation um, by one dealer in particular, but not necessarily with Longe. They prefer to manipulate Jorn. Uh, and unfortunately, it looks like potentially Moser. Um, however, I think Longe, they just don't make a ton of watches a year, right? Longe's production is probably 1,000, 1,500 watches a year. They've genuinely made great watches, better than Patek Philippe, most people think. Um, and they were very, very inexpensive pre-owned you know, considering what they were offering. Now that the watch market has skyrocketed and every brand has skyrocketed, and even the worst brands are selling a ton of watches, Lange, rightfully so, had an increase in value. And with the release of their sports watch, boutiques opening up, I think right, Lange, rightfully so, is increasing in pre-owned value. I do not think it's market manipulation. I think it is the intelligent consumer. Dylan Bruner. Hey, Fed, keep up the great work. Thank you. Does your existing collection influence new watch purchases, or do you just buy whatever you like? I do buy what I like, but my watch collection does influence my purchase. I mean, my Breguet Marine is a sports watch on rubber. My Piaget Polo is a sports watch on rubber. I probably wouldn't buy another sports watch on rubber because I have that covered. Is that always the case? No. 
Uh, I bought a Moser Pioneer, which was a sports watch on rubber. I just took it off the rubber and put it on a Kudu strap. So as you can see, I don't really listen to my own advice. But of course, what I have in my collection does affect what I buy because I don't want to be overly redundant. Esoteric215. Hey, Fed, where was your best watch buying experience? And which brand do you feel is consistent in giving that experience overall? So you can buy watches for, you know, get a good deal on a watch in two ways. Either you buy for price, where you get a killer deal, it's inexpensive, you know, you got a fantastic deal, you saved a ton of money, or you get great experience, great aftermarket support, uh, and, you know, you get treated like a king. Um, they're not usually mutually exclusive, but usually it is one or the other. Now, I don't think brand boutiques give you that best experience. Um, I think the best place to buy a watch, and caveat, you know, little asterisks, I used to work for them. So am I biased? Maybe. But I would say the best customer experience in the watch world, at least that I've experienced, is Wempe, New York, Fifth Avenue. The best staff in the game, uh, Rudy, who is the president of Wempe North America, was a fantastic boss when I worked there. They're heavy into training. They're heavy into knowledge. At least when I was there, they were not commission-based. And all that mattered was the customer. Give the customer the correct information. Treat the customer well. This is a special time for the customer. And that kind of shows. It's not all about closing the sale. Don't get me wrong. I mean, sales are important. And you did good sales. You know, they would treat you well. But uh, Wempe is, I don't know, from, from the training to, to the champagne to the little chocolates to the remembering when it's your birthday to having the best selection out there. Um, I just think if you had to buy a watch, you know, maybe there is a better place out there, but I don't know about it. If you had to buy a watch and price isn't the motivating factor, then the best experience that I know of is Wempe on Fifth Avenue in New York City. Cron89. Hey, Fed. Any upcoming travel plans and vacation? Yes, a ton. Not really vacation, though. Tomorrow, I go to Chicago. Why am I going to Chicago? Well, because I miss eating hot dogs, and I'm 5,000 miles short of hitting executive, uh, executive platinum on American Airlines. So essentially, it's a mileage run. Just going to Chicago for the weekend, gotta get that status. The next week, I'm going to San Juan. A uh, friend of mine has a conference out there, and I'm giving him a hand. And, you know, just why not go to Puerto Rico? Then in December, I'm going to Madrid to visit my family and my friends. And I'm going to uh, Napoli in Italy also to visit family. So lots of traveling, just the way I like it. My favorite question, Vangelis MMR. Hey, Fed, from Dubai. I love your content, mate. I have learned a lot of things, and I know for watches and i know a lot of watches from you thank you vangelis i think as you grow professionally and gaining more exposure as a successful entrepreneur well thank you again i'm noticing you're becoming more egocentric and direct on your expression and opinion don't don't let glory change you less of a question more of a comment but i wanted to address this because vangelis is not wrong he's not wrong and it's a criticism and i appreciate the criticism but I wanted to explain it and maybe even defend it a little bit. As far as I'm concerned, I'm one of the few, not the only, but one of the few watch YouTubers that's actually worked in watches and has touched a bunch of watches. We got one watch YouTuber who's a drop shipping uh, authorized dealers of watches he doesn't even know. I mean, he's a very smart guy, but he's been doing this two years. We got other guys selling straps. We got some guys just as hobbyists, and that's great. We've got a gray market dealer who's been doing it forever. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm the only watch YouTuber who's worked retail, authorized dealer, worked for Richemont, and now runs his own business. So, yeah, I'm a little cocky because I like to think I know more than probably almost anybody, with the exception of maybe one or two. Not to mention, for the first time, I'm running a successful business. Now, yes, my audience is everything. You guys make my business. I'm selling watches to you guys. But I don't have to kiss a brand's ass. Excuse my language. I don't need them. I don't need to fellatio them, as they, to quote one famous movie. Uh, I can talk badly about a brand if I want to and if I think that's true because I don't need to worry about them sending me free watches or them paying me $2,000 per video, which, by the way, that's actually a thing. You think people, you think brands send out free watches to 
you know, a lot of these YouTubers are just marketing. It's bullshit. If you can't say anything negative, then how can you talk about a subject with authority? For the first time ever, I, I mean, you know, not for the first time ever, but at least for the past few years, I don't have to care about what the brands think of me. And I don't have to give a shit about what anybody else thinks of me. I found another income stream and I need to be good to my subscribers and I want to be good to, good to my subscribers because they've been good to me and it's thanks to them that I have this business. But I will not filter my opinion. And I honestly believe I am one of the few YouTubers out there that doesn't have to. I know so many YouTubers personally that bite their tongue, you know, it kills them to see something nice, but they have to because they are getting either paid or they need to show a good impression so they can keep getting uh, getting watches and making content. I don't have to do that. So I do apologize if I come off as a little egocentric or poignant at times, um, but what you're getting now is the real me. No, no filter, no filter for at least the past three years. My earlier videos were a little bit more quiet. I didn't know what direction I was going to go into. You know, was I going to be an influencer, review watches for brands? I don't know. You keep it more PG. Now I don't care. I do what I want. And if you don't like it, I understand. Please leave and unsubscribe. But if you do like it, thank you. I, I appreciate it. And I really, really enjoy it. Um, and what you're getting is the real me. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Please check out DelrayWatch.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. It really does help. And we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.